Hey everybody, this is Steve with Bliss Pro, and I'm uh, sitting here with uh, some awesome World of Warcraft people. I'm going to have them go ahead and introduce themselves, and then we'll get right into the interview. Sure. Uh, I'm Steve Burke. I'm one of the senior designers. I focus primarily on the questing and overland content for a while. Yeah, we don't want a water spill. Uh, I'm Brian Holinka. I'm a senior designer uh, on WoW, and I uh, focus on PvP and some other systems. And I'm Chris Zerhut, lead class designer. Excellent. Thank you uh, guys for having us. Yeah. Thanks for sitting down. Um, let's jump right in. Is there any chance for more visual customization for beer slash cat druids, or perhaps a wider variety of animations? We're always looking for more uh, to do in the game like that, and we certainly have done some of that in the past. In, uh, in Cataclysm, we had all the revamp of the models for, for bear and cat forms. We'd like to do more like that. We don't have any specific plans right now. We're really here to talk about some of the, some of the other features uh, for World of Journal. So I'd like to talk about uh, like the Boost to 90 system we're talking about which I think is one of our most exciting new features we're putting in. Uh, the core concept behind it is that we want you, when you buy the game, to be able to install it on your machine and log in and play that very same day with your friends. If you think back, a lot of people over the years have dropped off playing World of Warcraft at, at various levels. Like the last time they played their character, they're level 78 in, in some zone in, in Northrand, and they have no idea what's in their bag, what quests they're doing, what they're trying to do with this character, and they don't even remember how to play it exactly. So what we're doing with the Boost to 90 feature is letting you take any character, no matter how, how you left them off, immediately bring them to 90, clean out all their bags, clear out all their quest log, and then take all their action bar down and boil it down to just a few buttons on their action bar, only three or four buttons on their action bar to start, and then gradually reintroduce them back into the game at the same time that they can play side by side with their friends. So in the first hour of the game, you'll be an introductory experience where you, you're playing that character where you only have those three or four buttons, but you're side by side with the experienced veterans doing the same quests, and the creatures are designed knowing that you have a limited ability choice. And over the course of, of, of adventuring for that first hour, every once in a while when you turn in a quest, a few more abilities get unlocked, so you go from a simple rotation to a slightly more complex rotation, and then you get some uh, uh, interrupts and movement abilities and those types of things, and then eventually you get some AoE spells and some cooldowns, and eventually we unlock everything for you. So we give you this experience where we gradually unlock and teach you how to play your character again, and we've set everything all up so you can figure out what you're doing, you know where you are in the world, and you can play with your friends today instead of the, oh god, I was at level 78, what do I do now? Right, so it's all about being able to play with your friends today. And is that something that uh, you guys did uh, initially, going like knowing that you were going to develop that way, or was it something that came from the community? Because I know, me personally, is watching the community feedback, saw a lot of complaints being like, "Oh, these boost to ninety newbies are mm -hmm. not going to know, you know, how to use their characters properly. They're going to be raids like making us." Yeah, it's been. It's been part of the concept for this, this expansion the entire time. We're very aware of the problem because we see it amongst everybody at Blizzard that we work with. We, we all play our games, but we all take a break every now and then. The project that we're working in goes into crunch. We don't have enough time to play World of Warcraft for a while. We come back and say, where am I? What am I doing? We've, we've heard that a lot. So we knew it was a problem that needed to be fixed, and that's the primary purpose behind having characters boosted to 90. It's not to somehow shortcut the power progression or miss the story. It's to let you play with your friends. Now, as far as like the, I don't want to have noobs in my dungeon problem, um, one of the features that we're going to lean on for that is the Proving Grounds feature, which is, is currently live in the game. So what we have in mind is you will not be able to queue for Heroic Dungeons or for LFR until you've done a certain level of achievement in Proving Grounds. So if you can't do a Heroic Dungeon until you have a Silver Medal from Proving Grounds, we know you understand the basics of your class and you, you understand what's going on. And so you're protected from running into the player who says you're, you're dumb and don't know what you're doing, and they're protected from having to teach somebody new who doesn't belong there, and we keep the two groups apart while so protecting us from that, from that problem. We also would like to make improvements to Proving Grounds where it does a better job of diagnosing what you did wrong. So, so it's, hey, there's this ability you're not using, and it's really important. You should use it more. Now, that feature probably won't make it into 6.0, but it's one, one, it's meaning one of the patch features coming shortly after expansion is Proving Grounds diagnosing better what's going wrong with your character. Now, it's also important to note, though, that you know, there will still be dungeon content for players who don't have the Proving Grounds. There will be normal dungeons that they can go into. Uh, you know, they, they just also have to kind of spend some time getting to know their class. But there will be the ability for them to run like normal dungeons and whatnot. So they won't feel like they're being gimped or, you know, Correct, yeah. uh, not getting something. That's right. Okay. Um, do you guys have anything to report on the Toy Box tab for fun slash vanity items? Uh, any chance it comes out prior to 6.0? And also, what about tabards? Uh, yeah, certainly the, the toys thing is something we feel is important. We all 
experienced that problem firsthand, right? Especially with something that we felt was a really fun way for us to reward players and miss the Pandaria through quests and whatnot, getting that puntable marmot or whatnot. So uh, it was it was definitely a priority going into this to try and clean up the inventory. I mean, people, the, the thing that players always might say is, I want more bags, give me more bag space. But really, we're like, let's look at what the, the core of the problem here is. And it's just, there are a lot of things taking up those slots that maybe don't have to. So yes, in uh, Warlords, we are coming out with the, the toy system uh, where all of the toys will be in a, something very similar to the Mountain Pets UI. We'll have a toys one just like that. And so players will be able to access those toys. Uh, whenever they need them and uh, you know we have similar plans for other things like heirlooms or whatnot um, but those won't be available before 6.0 because that's just something we're rolling into Warlords uh, of Draenor it's important for us to focus on getting that expansion done so we can get it to people rather than coming out with stuff beforehand piecemeal you know it's better to wrap it all in that package and, and bring it out to players also uh, to that same point we're, we're doing the same thing on the quest side where uh, any of the pelts or anything that you're, you're tasked to go collect, mm-hmm. that's not going to clog up your inventory anymore. We're still going to track it, but it's not going to be, it's not going to fill up your bags. And trade skills. Trade skills, we're stacking to 100 now. Oh, yeah. Excellent. So we're, we're very conscious of the problem and yeah. doing, doing what we can to so fix those it. those five slots of ore are now one slot of ore and whatnot. Right. We're giving you a whole new page of void storage, and we have space in the bank. We know a lot of things can help with here. Um, a lot of happy players. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. yeah. And uh, while we're on that topic, somebody mentioned that you mentioned the mountain pet UI. One of the complaints we've heard about Warlords of Draenor is, hey, I'm not going to be able to fly at the beginnings of Warlords, but I have these really awesome flying mounts that I'm not allowed to use while I'm on the ground. So we've taken that restriction away, and all mounts will be usable on the ground as, that, instead of having it. So like the flying serpent mounts will now work on the ground and be allowed. So there won't be any mounts that, that you can't use. That was that one of the big downsides to that. Um, it's really important to us that people are engaging in the exploratory gameplay we have in mind for Warlords of Draenor. And if they're from in the air, it kind of spoils the whole experience of exploration. So we think it's really important that you're doing that from the ground. That's the main reason for the restriction. In fact, Steve can tell you an awful lot about how that exploration is going to work. Sure, please. So uh, we, we looked closely, uh, this expansion, at things that we could do to help the questing experience. It's, game's been out for a while now and, and we haven't really revisited that area of the game and uh, we turned a few knobs and, and looked at a few things and turned a few of them back and uh, where we're settling in uh, is, is something I think we're really happy with um, if, if you just want to level straight up to max level and get right to rating it's going to feel very similar to the way WoW did before the, the storylines however they're going to be more punchy they're going to be more focused and concentrated what we've done if you look at a zone like Jade Forest, for example, it had a really clear story to it, but it was kind of bogged down by a lot of the side tendrils, you know, that, that, would, that would soak up. So one of the things that we've done is when you hit your map key now, you'll see icons uh, over the map as you, as you reveal those pieces. And uh, that's just going to signify to you that there's, there's something there for you to do. Um, there's not going to be a big wall of text giving you context or exposing some character that, that's just kind of talking to talk. You're going to walk into that area and right there where your quest tracker is, it's just going to reveal objectives that are really straightforward and super contextual that just don't need all that extra text. So when we do deliver a quest to you, it's really punchy and you know that it's something worth paying attention to. So... Do you feel like any of the you know, sort of lore-oriented players will kind of feel slighted by that, or is it not taking away from the richness of the story? If you do that? I feel like they're, they're going to appreciate it more because you know we're, we're really packing all those quests that you see. Th- those are going to be full of lore. Everybody felt, I, I think, sometimes when when we're sending you out to do just an ancillary task, and we're bogging you down with, oh, here, here's some words just I'm saying them to say. It's not really advancing the story. It's not really uh, moving the ball anywhere. It's just taking up kind of mental bandwidth and in this way when you see a quest pain you know that it's going to be meaningful so i, I think they'll appreciate it all the time of the quest so they can spend more time on the story quests and less time on these incidental side stories you're actually going to get more story in the game that's meaningful not less as a result of this change so um another big feature we're going to have in this expansion is garrisons so after you do your first one hour experience uh of defeating the iron horde and driving them back from the dark portal uh, you rescue uh, various various people on the horde side. For example, you res- rescue a bunch of the Frostwolf clan, and so you take them back to to their clan in in Frostfire. And as a reward, Duratan, Thrall's father, gives you a plot of land, 
and which you start building your own garrison. Just like you were the general in charge of uh, Warcraft RTS, you're building a base, and you've got to decide which buildings you're going to build, what, what strategy you're going to p- pursue. Are you going to have a stables, or are you going to have a workshop? Are you going to have a mage tower, or are you going to have an armory? And, and so you, you have this build, bunch of buildings you have to build and, and set them up the way you want. And as you're adventuring, you get to recruit various followers for those buildings. And they, one guy might be a blacksmith warrior. You might have a frost mage tailor. You might have a warlock who's just really good at crowd control and AOE. And you've got to f- assemble that team, and you'll use them for trade skills. You'll use them to send them out on missions and, and pick which followers you want to have and which buildings you want to have and design, design your very own base. But uh, Steve can talk to you a lot about how that's integrated with the questing system and how that works. Sure, sure. So, yeah, we're really excited about, about Garrisons. It's something we've been talking about for years, and I'm just super excited that we finally get to get to get it in the game. And it's coming along really nicely. I think people are going to be really excited to see it. Um, he mentioned you, you're going to go out in the world. As you're questing, sometimes the quest givers themselves, after you've done their quest line, will be available for you to recruit and bring back to your garrison. So every time we, we're going to redirect you back to that garrison really frequently throughout your, your experience in the expansion and every time you go back you're going to see these familiar faces maybe it's a guy that you rescued from the bottom of a dungeon maybe it's a guy that you saved from a, a pack of ogres here in, in the zone uh, or somebody that you've done those, those quest lines with once they're in your garrison uh, you're going to be able to uh, level them up they're, they've got item slots they're going to carry weapons and, and armor uh, with an eye level just like you uh, as a character you're going to be able to assemble them in teams, I think, like like Chris mentioned, and uh, and send them out on missions, just like you did, you know, quests and missions when you were when you were coming up. Right. So you get to call the shots now, and, and you've got guys you get to direct, and uh, it's a lot of elegant design that's kind of coming together. I think it's going to be really exciting. The key detail is it's integrated into the zones as you level up through the quest zones. You're, it's influencing the story and the quest lines you're doing. You have to make hard choices as you're leveling. It's a part of the entire experience, start to finish. That's a great point. You, you make a lot of, 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 of hard choices uh, from the buildings that you actually build. You're going to have more buildings to choose from than you have actual uh, plots to build upon. And they're all going to give real tangible, meaningful in-game rewards or, or uh, benefits to you. So you're going to you know, pick and choose carefully and you know, probably not, not the same in, on different characters. Um, it's not a permanent choice. You're going to be able to say, ah, oh, I, I, I chose the armory. I really want the mage tower. You're going to be able to switch that out. Um, likewise with the followers themselves. Uh, you know, maybe you've got a, a no gnome policy in your garrison, right? Or all gnome policy. Uh, it, it, you'll be able to pick and choose, uh, you know, who you want to fill the garrison with, which guys you want to level up. Um, Another thing that we're doing with garrisons is uh, periodically, as you go out and adventure in the world and uh, kind of irritate some of the enemies here on, on Draenor, they're going to counterattack your garrison, and you're going to have to rally your, your, your followers together to help fight off those, uh, those attacks. That can be really rewarding, uh, and we're going to be allow you to bring other players in there for that experience too so that'll be pretty exciting did you guys draw uh any sort of um experience or uh i should say inspiration from other games because uh, you like you mentioned kind of the rts feel of the garrisons and that sounds a lot of it sounds very similar to kind of like final fantasy tactics where you're like picking up players and send them off on missions it's the origin of warcraft right right you're fighting these guys these are the enemies from the original orcs versus humans so having your own garrison base that you're building to fight them with only makes sense it's it's really part of, of Blizzard's history and where we come from, what Warcraft is all about. So I don't really think it's inspired by other games. It's inspired by our games. That said, we're not above. I mean, we, we all play all kinds of games. And um, we're, we're really abreast. You know, if something works, you know, it might not be something that, that necessarily fits World of Warcraft. But it'll get us thinking. And we'll, yeah. it'll germinate those ideas. And, and it'll come out kind of in a Blizzard way. Right. <laughs> You want to tell me yeah, a little bit sure. about Ashran? Yeah, I can tell you a little bit about uh, our, our zone, uh, Ashran. It's a, a new experiment for us uh, in uh, creating a persistent and perpetual PvP area in the world. It's something we haven't ever really done before. Most of our PvP scenarios were done in instances of battlegrounds where you kind of, you know, first team to hit, you know, 1,500 or three captures or whatever. They're the team that wins. But a lot of players, I think, have always clamored for this world PvP type of environment, the situation where, hey, I just 
go in there and I, I engage in a fight and you know I fight for a little while and then I leave. They you know harken back to the days of All Track Valley when it used to last for two or three days and it was the same fight. Uh, and so that was something we wanted to bring the players. We wanted to bring that feeling of the world and exploration to PvP. You know we will all will still kind of support and and provide new content for our arenas and our battleground players. But let's try and do something new in the PvP environment. Some new form of content. So uh, in Ashran, you know, you have a, a horde base and alliance base on opposing sides of an island, and both sides are kind of battling for control of the island. And so there's a central lane running between the two of them where horde and alliance uh, uh, guards and NPCs are fighting back and forth, and players can engage in that central battle, kind of help push to the opposing fortress, yeah, yeah, and sack the opponent base and, you know, kind of like, yeah, we showed it to the horde. That's awesome. But there will also be things around the outskirts of the island that are kind of reminiscent of Timeless Isle. That idea that, you know, I can go and I can explore and I can find rares and elites or whatnot, uh, creatures, and I can kill them, and there's something cool in there for me. Um, but if I do it on their side of the island, it's even more beneficial. So it's kind of this point where, you know, I'm an alliance player, and all right, I could stay on my side of the island and farm over here, or you know, I can go with my boys to the other side, start attacking the horde side of it, and uh, kind of you know, get on their turf a little bit, and you know, puff up our chest and say, you know, we're here, we are, we're we're taking your stuff. So uh, it's going to be a super cool experience. I'm really excited for it. You know, it's one of the. It's not like Wintergrass or Tolbarad. Those were areas where like every three hours we kind of played a. A battleground, right? This is more of a, a perpetual experience. Players can come in. We've we've done uh, used a lot of our uh, new server technology that allows us to bring servers from a number of different realms onto a single instance and play there. So players will like you know fly into Ashran and it'll feel like they're still on their own realm, but players from all other realms will be on there. And then we did that so that the zone feels full, but also to balance the number of alliance and horde players on each side. So it's something new. I think it's exciting. I, it's funny because I, I hear enthusiasm not only from PvP players, but I think from a lot of PvE players. There are a lot of players who were really into that uh, Terran Mill, South Shore, like old PvP style grinds. Like they liked getting in there, like a huge 40 on 40 man battle and just grinding away at honorable kills. And uh, so I think this kind of will be a very similar experience where they can just go in there, get in the mix, the big fight, you know, kind of launch blizzards from behind 30 other uh, characters and kind of get lost in the crowd and, and they'll think it's cool. While the, the PvP players we have who like really love being like a badass commando squad can march around the whole zone re really wreaking havoc. So it's going to be a, a cool opportunity. What's going on in Howling while we're back in in Draenor, well, one of the thi the, the key things that uh, uh, you know maybe Steve can allude to more is that you know when we are going into the expansion, you know we are always thinking, what would be an awesome experience? Where would be a cool place to go? What would be something cool for players to do? And f we just felt like this was a great time to revisit some of these awesome characters that. You know, there are players who used to play the old Warcraft games, and they're like, oh, I remember that guy. He was the bad guy from Warcraft and won. But there are a lot of players who aren't even familiar with these guys. So this is a great opportunity for us to create a new and savage world in Draenor, you know, encounter all kinds of new areas and creatures that you've never seen before. And, and you know, the, this is a great setting for it. And so that's our focus is like, you know, you go to Draenor, you experience Draenor, but there's not this like weird time traveling back to the future, you know, disappearing photograph thing going on. It's what happens in, I don't want to say what happens in Draenor, stays in Draenor, but, but essentially that's kind of, uh, you know, the gist of it is that this is like another thing that is trying to invade our world, our world of Azeroth, not necessarily like, you know, every time a squirrel dies in Dran or like a baby is not born in Elwyn Forest or something like that. That's not really the case. That's not really what we're going for. We just want to tell a cool story, put players in the midst of an awesome environment, uh, and that's what it's about. At the same time, players who are familiar with Outland, who've been there, adventured it, know it well, are going to get a lot of seeing Draenor from before it was destroyed. 
the, the, the things that we, well, where did Arakoa come from and, and what's up with all these ogres where did they come what was going on with all those guys you know where did Zangar Marsh come from what did it used to be so there's going to be a lot of, of familiarity and discovery of what was the history behind all those things that happened right what, what were the Arakoa bef- before the world fell they were a much more beautiful avian race that it took to the skies and the ogres had their own empire and things like that that are going to be cool to discover and figure out so nothing's happening in Outland but People who know Outland are going to see a lot of cool stuff in Draenor. We're, we're being really conscious, I think, uh, to, to try to give you all those little hits. You know, we're all familiar with Outland, and, and it's nice to have that nostalgia when you run across something and, and see how it was back in the day without making it feel like I've been here and done that. This mm-hmm. is going to really feel like a whole new experience. And, uh, yeah, just like Brian said, just super savage playing with all these iconic characters that I think new and old players uh, of Warcraft will, will appreciate. Another good example of that would be the Alliance characters at the end of the first quest zone. They're going to arrive at the Temple of Karim, which we know at the Black Earth. So the familiar places will have changed into something different from what we knew them as in the Outland, but still contain the history of the Seriously, That's a question about uh, Connected Realms. Um, seeing connected realms demonstrate that having a guild across multiple realms is possible. Is there any chance that we'll see the ability to join guilds on other realms that we're not connected? Yeah, we certainly understand what players are, are asking for there, and there's a lot of va- advantage to it. The, the technologies that we have developed have allowed players to get closer together, and we think that's important. What we wanted to do with Connected Realms was bring players together without like destroying their identity, but we think there's a lot of advantage to that realm community, and I think even when you see these Connected Realms happen, you see players' reaction to that, like, oh, you know, our community's being a little disrupted here. So, um, on one hand, you know, like, we could see that idea of like cross realm guilds or whatnot and players desire for it but what's most important is that uh, to us is that that we preserve the the value of the communities that we have and try and you know find ways for players to expand them if if they can without you know doing too much to harm what we have i think uh one key detail on that is our overall goal for this whole expansion is making sure that when you log into warlords of draenor you can play with your friends And so if you take a look at what we're doing with the raid lock system, we're doing a lot there to help people across different realms play together. So it will now be possible when we have the the normal and heroic difficulties, and we're also adding the mythic difficulty, on normal and heroic difficulty, you can play with people cross cross realm. There won't be any restrictions on it anymore. And on top of that, there will both be what we call flex size raid, meaning you can bring anywhere from 10 to 30 people to that raid. You can add or subtract a person at any time without any penalty or loss. You'll get same amount of loot, the difficulty will stay the same, but it means you never have to say, oh, sorry, dude, we're full. Or, oh, we can't go tonight because so-and-so didn't show up. You can say, you know what, let's put about 15 guys on our roster and we'll always be fine. So there's a lot, just total emphasis on, we want you to be able to play with your friends all the time. Uh, the ability to scale lower level content has been talked about before in terms of being able to down level characters to make older content challenging again. But the roadblock for it was coming up with a proper reward system for it. Has there been any headway on that? That's something that we still talk about in the office quite a bit. Um, and I don't want to say there's been no headway. I mean, it's something we're actively discussing. We don't have any announcements for that uh, for 6 but like obviously one of the the valuable things about that kind of alluding back to what Chris was just saying was the idea of being able to go down and play with your lower level friend and like kind of level up in the dungeons together uh, and in in a way the fact that you get a free level 90 boost with warlords of draenor kind of makes that problem a little less uh, of an issue because now your player will your your friend who's coming back he'll be level ninety and be able to play so uh, certainly you know alt characters and, and whatnot maybe we have would need that solution but for the general case of my lower level buddy you know is hasn't really caught up to me well now he's going to be caught up to you great nice time yeah. thank yeah. you guys so much for uh, having us for having Bliss Pro here we appreciate your time. Um, Looking forward to Warlords. Excellent. Thank you.